Hey YouTube, Mike here. How we doing today? Hope we all had a very nice week. All right, YouTube. Um, for the next couple of videos, um, I have to um, pretty much do kind of reviews and um, explanations. Uh, meds can't use the uh, um, power tools. So um, I got a bunch of questions. Um, that I have that I've been asked um, like I've been doing for the past couple of videos and um, I figure let's get some of them out of the way all right well last week um, we built that tote and the thing worked really good and I had a couple of people ask me um, I guess they didn't understand what I was using it for um, they thought that it was going to be like either big, like roll strapping or um, big pipe hooks, like the stuff that I showed um, hanging the um, ducts uh, piping. Basically, it's to hold things like these, what they call two hole straps, or we call them rabbit ears, or nail straps. And, I mean, as you can see, I took everyone's advice. I uh, rounded off the corners, sanded it all down. I may even give it a coat of um, um, almost like a neon paint. But this thing worked great. And my son even figured out one better thing to do with it. Um, see, we, I put um, one-inch screws and, and, and we ran out of them. But uh, inch and a quarter, two-inch screws something to get a little bit further up if we have to or go through a piece of wood. But what he figured was um, I looked down into the hole before I got in there and I saw that he took out the trays and you know that, that they make the double trays? So you have these single ones and the double ones? Well inside of the, um, the Milwaukee totes, the ones that I redid and put my tools inside of them and all the ones that I have in my truck, um, I utilized some of the um, little boxes and inside the boxes we put um, the open off fittings and if you look back at one of my videos that's that uh, piping system that it, you use a Milwaukee machine you put a ring on it expands it you push the fitting into it it closes pretty much in seconds and two elephants couldn't pull these fittings apart so what he ended up doing was we use like a Festool tote the smaller one and we usually put our tools in it, like that, like that machine, a cutter, a ruler, the marker, and stuff like that. And that we drag onto the house. But we also then take a second Festool tote, but these will not fit in them. So that's why I built this. Well, he ended up taking out the trays because he didn't need the hangers right away, or at least he didn't need all of the hangers. So he just left in, like to say he was running three quarter first, the main trunk line. Well, he had half of it with fittings and rings and half of it with nail straps, two hole straps and screws. So I thought that was great. You know, it multitasked the, the, the tote um, to do two different things, but it worked great. Um, yeah, it's a little dirty for wear, but um, it worked really nice. We just kept switching out these totes and one side we put the fittings, one side we put the hangers and we went about our business. But it worked nice and you know, um, it's got a little weight to it once we filled it, but um, it didn't, it wouldn't spill. Um, we didn't have to search for them, so that worked out really nice. The light, this light that I went, I just picked up, which is the um, twenty one forty four twenty. And let me just grab a battery here, cause it's dual voltage, um, and as you can see filthy dirty I didn't even want to clean it and show you so basically it'll run off the battery it has that um, first mode and it has three settings then you go over to the second mode and then it's got a spotlight and also three settings back to the light mode over here and let's not blind ourselves and shut it off and also it is 110 volt but um, I had an email from one of my subscribers Jim uh, Jim if you see the video it was a pleasure talking to you I've talked to him for an hour uh, on the phone um, 
it, it was a, a, a pleasure speaking to you. And he asked me about um, the connectors that he saw I use in other videos, like the um, uh, uh, Nutric Powercon ones, which I'm going to go over in a second. But I also have, and I picked up, and the place that I found them was going was navigating Toolnut, and it is the Quick Lock connector. So I thought I actually found one, and um, I did not um, uh, show it because I didn't. I only thought I had them on my cords. I bought a half a dozen of them. So basically, here's the cord that I actually carry on my um, <clears throat> on my pickup truck. All right, it is, um, um, what is it? It's uh, 16, 16 gauge, and I have the plug on it. Now, let me just show you something with this plug. Basically, what it does is it locks the male end in. So we had this light under the house, and we stretched, you know, a 100-foot cord from, you know, the, the, the electrician leaves us plugs. And basically, when you plug it in, it locks in and now we can pull the light anywhere we wanted to under the house we turned this light on it was three foot crawl space my son and I were on either side of the main three inch line we were running for the sewer and we had this in the middle and this thing lit up as I'm like half blind with glasses under a house you know with the beams this close to me I could read my ruler, I can cut the pipe, I mean it was just, and then when we move, say a couple of feet, we just pull the light, we didn't have to worry about this thing unplugging. It is one of the best plugs that I ever bought, and I don't know why I never showed it, but using it under the house, it was just the best thing since sliced white bread. Now, and then just to release it, all you do is just pull the yellow tab, and it unlocks. Now, I retrofitted, I use the rigid cords. Most of them are um, like, uh, what, what do I use, uh, 16, 16 gauge. And I have them 25, 50, and 100 footers. So I cut them off, and basically if you see, I'll show you the difference. You see here on it, you actually cut, and it gives you, it's, it's stepped. See how it's stepped? And it's good from, and, I, and I, you know, it's stupid me, I read it, and now I forgot it. I think it's good from six, 16, 14 to 18 gauge. Oh, 10 to 16 gauge wire. Sorry, and this is 16 gauge. Um, so you basically cut this and it has two different retainers in it. You could use a stake on to put the screw in. You can also, it's got the clamp, but then it's got another copper clamp that you bend over then it's got one, two clamp downs that fit into grooves to prevent this thing from pulling out. It's very strong, and I think it's around like $19. So I, I don't need a very long cord on my truck in case I, you know, just have had to test a tankless heater. I just need something to get me pretty close to an outlet. Um, but <laughs> once you lock this thing in, it doesn't move, doesn't move at all. So it's called a quick lock. You can find it on Toolnut's um, website. Um, again, all of the um, model numbers um, in the description below. Uh, and it's, I, it was around like $19 or $20 for this thing. Uh, very heavy duty, very heavy duty. And I've had them, and like I said, I, I have no idea why I've never showed them, but I have them for probably Oh, more than my YouTube channel. I would say at least three years I have them, for at least my truck. And then this one I just happened to locate while just going through drawers uh, of my sautainers. So I found it. But So I have all the model numbers and everything I can put on. Okay. the I have a video. It's probably my... Uh, within, the, within the first ten videos. And I found this... I found this system um, again on you on YouTube. Um, so it is called uh, Nutric, and it's the PowerCon True One. 
basically what this does and I just took out one of my tools and the only fest tool that I retrofitted was my corner uh, barrel grip sander that was the only fest tool that did not have the locking plug so basically what this does and it even gives it a one step more than the uh, here let me grab one I have it right here give me a second oh being unprepared so you guys with the fest tool you know what the plug is right there so it basically does what the fest tool does but like one step further so what you do is you have a bunch of these and again model numbers in the description below you have a bunch of these NAC 3MX which are basically the it's the male end this is the female end that's on your cord so if you look in there you'll see that there's dun 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 can we see it you see there's three prongs three um, silver male prongs and then these have the female in it so what I did was like I have the big Bosch plunge router the three horsepower and so I when I cut the cord off that ended up being um, I think it was 16 gauge yeah it was 16 gauge and this is all right hold on I'm all confused here now give me a second here and I'll tell you exactly what I got let me find that okay this is 16 gauge and this is I think 18 14 all right 14 gauge now I ended up buying two of them and I took two 14 and 16 basically um, your smaller voltage tools your larger voltage tools which are the the the, the 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 big plunge router that is sitting here behind the air conditioner you make you can buy one of these uh, female ends and put it on the heaviest cord okay which is the 14 gauge and okay I'm all I, why am I getting confused today and I gotta look at for oh, yeah I'm right 14 gauge so you put it on the 14 gauge cord and basically what you're doing is that even though you're using the bigger cord on the smaller tool it'll still be fine but I ended up just making two so what what it what this incorporates is you just line up offset the two yellow tabs and twist and they lock in so now you have this little pigtail on on your corded tools and this thing I just hang on my I have them ha hanging on my assembly table and when I need them I'll just take it out and use it this one happens to be because I before I bought that cordless um, router I used to you I use the um, Bosch pony a, a lot so I leave this in in the sustainer and then you just basically and it's even got like like finger tabs here on the bottom and you basically just pull these turn them you can hear the click and it pulls out and I have a whole video with the camera right up to my hands putting one of these together it it is they give you all of the directions in here to cut the wire right on the right on the bag so when you cut the bag just cut the top when you if you buy them save the bag because as you can see it gives you all of the measurements on where to cut the wire and how to put it together and you do need a little as I call it wire friendly grease to get this rubber part on and in not to get it to start to twist or bubble or push itself in so but watch the video I, I do the whole assembly on one of them male female are all the same so they're 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 the same it's just that they're different there's a then they're as you can see they're just a little bit different end to to um when you put them together so basically you just put them together just so that as you they're a little offset there's even a little arrows like <laughs> like like left turn right turn arrows on the on the ground that um to to align them and then as you could see it just clicked in and now the tool is locked in 
So one one power cord and a zillion or many tools you should have as a pigtail. And then boom, it comes right apart. Um, very nice. <clears throat> Again, it was a tool, uh, what am I, a year and a half now? Um, found them pretty, I found them like just before I started my channel. I started retrofitting them and I even have, they even make an outlet and it's be very, I'll, I'll show it on my next video, but on my assembly table, I have a, a, a duplex um, outlet with a 15 foot cord laid up inside of the Craig table. And I also have um, one of these plugs in the um, table also because I have one that actually has a male and female end and that is on hiatus because I don't know where it is. So picture um, this cord with one of these on this end so now I can plug that into the table, this into the tool, then coming out of the back of the um, plug is just a regular 115 foot um, cord that I can plug into one of my outlets on the wall and use now. I can use power off of that with these tools. So I can actually have three tools plugged into there. Did I need it? No, because I had this and that. It was on the website. It was real cool looking. It also comes with a rubber flap that covers the outlet from moisture, dirt, dust, bugs, whatever. And it, it was just like really cool to, to um, so I just bought it and put it in. Have I ever used it? No, I have not. So um, I always, you know, if I'm gonna use this router, um, when if I bring the assembly table out here, I'll just plug it in with either this or this cord with the big router and, and I got it. But it was cool, but just to let you know when you navigate the site, you'll see um, the different uh, um, systems that they have. Um, a lot of this is actually for the uh, movie. Um, they cater to like um, the, the movies, Broadway, for that type of um, electronics. Price-wise, I, can, I can't even tell you what I pay for them, um, but I'll, I'll look it up and, 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 and I'll put it in, in the description. Um, but like I said, I, I don't remember, but I just thought they were just so nice uh, with the lock and also, you know, these things are pretty bulky to, to be putting on your um, uh, And they do make I mean even Home Depot makes a locking male end and stuff like that But this is really good. I don't ever have to worry about the male end because most of the time We'll tie it around the, the temporary pole plug this in or we'll drop our own You know quad box plug it in make a knot uh, We even have that locking cinch thing that goes over this but this end here was always the nuisance, especially with the uh, using one before we had the cordless electric hammer, um, pulling that thing and pushing it and, oh, and I plug it back in and making the knot and stuff. You just, you kink the wire and stuff like that. This, this thing works great. Um, I tell you a lot of my contractors when they saw it, uh, I'm pulling up the website on my phone so that they can buy these things. Um, they, they just, they work really well. Alrighty. Um, I had um, a question about my, um, uh, like how I purchase my my stuff, uh, all my everything that I have. Um, n no, I I'm not a multimillionaire. Basically, what I've done is, and I know I've explained this before, but this is probably this is a lot for the newest subscribers and the past like dozen or so questions that I've had in the comments and in emails. Um, I have been a tool nut, excuse the pun, probably since I was eight years old going with my father and, and the workers. I love tools. So, you know, I, I, I bought them and, and at, at one time I, I probably had a dozen cordless drills, four or five circular saws, jig saws. You, you get what I was saying is, you know, whether it be M Milwaukee, Bosch, Makita, uh, Ryobi, because the tool store I used to go to, he used to say, oh, everybody had a strong suit. Makita. Makita, you remember the first Makita with that big long battery that went into the handle? 
I mean, when I bought one for my birthday, rode my bicycle to the tool store because my uncle and my father were like, ah, those things are a piece of shit. Well, yeah, the cord, the cord. And I'm like, no, the, everybody uses it. So for my birthday, I went and I spent, I think it was like $90. You know, one battery to charge it, a drill. It had that big, came with the double-sided bit. And I went and bought it. And I brought it to the shop. And I was with my uncle. We were putting a boiler in. And we used it to put the tech screws into the flue pipe. So I'm putting the screws in. I said, all right, Uncle, I'm all done. Goes, what do you mean you're all done? Yeah, I'm all done. Wait, let me see that thing. Well, boom, boom, oh, this thing is great. He went hump back. He shows my father. Hey, Henry, look at this thing. Your, your, Michael bought it for his birthday. Uh, let me, oh, it's a, a piece of junk. No, try it. Tried it. On the way home that night, we went to the tool store. Tool store. My father bought five of them. Gave, put one on every truck. Loved it. So through the years, I, I know I rambled on with that one. Through the years... I ended up with tons of tools. And then when I started really looking, and especially with Festool, I was like, hey, I'm just gonna sell my stuff. So if I have to sell three things to buy the TS-55, or four things, I'm not using it. It's collecting dust. So I started selling it to other contractors and friends, firemen, and then I would go buy a tool. Then eBay started. And then, you know, they were, they were calling me like eBay junkie because I just had everything put on there. So I would sell a bunch of stuff and to buy one tool. Now, um, uh, the Capex saw is the best example. I had a Miller MIG TIG arc welder, argon gas, brand new. We were going to build a motorcycle. So we bought the frame, we bought the engine, I bought a bunch of tools, and me and my workers were going to build the Economy Plumbing Chopper, OCC. We were big into OCC. My brother-in-law worked for me. So I bought this welder, and I had a, a stick welder, I, I had a wire feed welder, but I bought this thing. Well, we never used it. It was brand spank. It was still wound up. I brought it here to Florida, but I wanted a Capex saw. My landlord, whose son was a welder, says, what are you doing with this thing? I never see you use it. It's brand new. It's wired. Blah, 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 blah. I says, look, I want to sell it. He goes, well, how much you want for it? I said, listen, I'm looking for to buy a Capex saw. What's that? I said, it's a Festool chop saw. I says, this is what it costs. And at the time it was $1,400. He goes, is that what you want for the tool? I says, yeah, but this is what you got to do. Call up Woodcraft, pay for it with your credit card. Whatever, the, whatever it is, plus the tax, pay for it. We'll wheel the thing out right now calls his son over, they wheel the thing out, he gets on the phone, right in my office, calls up Woodcraft, pays for it on the phone, I drive there at night with my son, I pick it up. Didn't cost me a penny. And I had this thing sitting there, and you know, it had to be cleaned up, it was dusty, but that's how I do it. And I'll tell you guys, it worked great. Now, at first, I wanted a tool. Um, let, me, let me see, oh, um, the Fest Tool Drill. You know, 600 bucks. So I would just, I'd sell 10 things. I, I want it, I want it. Give me 100 bucks for it. You know, give me 50 bucks for it. And I would sell them, but I would rush it just because I wanted the tool. I had a bunch of other drills, but I just wanted that tool. I saw it, I saw it on YouTube. I wanted it now. So what I learned was why rush? Put it on eBay, let it, let it go, let it bid. Put it on what you think you, it's worth and you know, if it's worth 100, don't sell it for 50. You know, be patient. And that's what, it took a couple of years, but I started being patient with it. And then I would then not have to sell six things to, to buy one. I could sell, say, three or four to buy one. And that's what I've done. The only thing that, we, that I bought with, with, with actually our money, and that was after the two contractors were badly injured on their table saws. And go back in my video, uh, you'll see the story. That's my saw stop, um, the, the bulk saw stop. Um, that, you know, my, my wife and I over dinner decided buy the thing because you can't afford to get hurt. And even though I've been using a table saw for 25, 30 years, these guys were using a table saw for 40 plus years, kickback, Knocked, boom, fell on the blade with his hand. You know, it doesn't matter how, how much experience and, and how long you could be using it, eight hours a day, seven days a week. You never know what's gonna happen. So that's why she's like, listen, just go out and buy it. It's safe. 
you'll feel comfortable with it. And, and I'll be honest with you, I always did feel a little uncomfortable and that's why I'm very cautious with it. Um, all the other little doodads sold stuff to buy it. Um, got the over on Dove's extractor because I went and picked it up instead of having it delivered. So <clears throat> that's what I ended up doing. And then I bought it. I go to Woodcraft, uh, the, the little bit set. Clean the stoppage, instead of getting paid, give me the bit set. We call it even. So that's basically it. And one other little thing, one other little subject that I want to touch on is um, the when decisions when you're going to buy tools. Now, I'm like I said, I am not sponsored. Everything that I have, I purchase. Bought it with, nothing is given to me for free. Any of the TSO products, Festool, Milwaukee, nothing. I'm looking to get the new Milwaukee threader, the cordless threader. I called Milwaukee up. I said, listen, I'm a plumber that does gas piping. I, I have tons of your Milwaukee tools and I review them all the time. I don't want it for free. Give it to my distributor, <clears throat> which is a good friend of mine. We belong to the same gun club together. He's the Milwaukee distributor. Don't, I don't want it for free. I'll pay for the unit. I will use it and I will give a true review on it. They haven't gotten back to me yet. Maybe I'll get it. Maybe I'm not. I won't. But when it's released in April, I'm going to buy it. I already told my supply house to get it for me. I'll purchase it, use it, review it. So that's the way I am. That's the way I feel. And that's the way I'll always be. And that's the way I like watching people when they um, review their tools that they bought them. And I did watch every other people that were sponsored. And, you know, you got to tell that you've been sponsored when the, the video opens up. And, you know, God bless them. More power to you. Um, they're good woodworkers. And, and I did take their um, advice on the tool. But review the tool. D don't, and if you're, it, it, like Fest Tool. If you're used and you have them and you've been buying them, whether I have convinced you to buy them or other, you, you get a multiple people on YouTube that have convinced you to buy it, it's a good tool. Just because some of these tool companies raise their prices, everything gets raised. My, my tankless heaters, I started them 10 years ago. Okay, I paid $780 for one tile of tankless. Now I pay 900. It's just goes, everything goes up. They buy parts from people that have to buy parts and material and they go up and that goes up and it's like a snowball. It's not, they're not price gouging. It, it just goes up. And, and that's the God's honest truth. I see it in my business on everything that I buy. So just go with your gut feeling or if you have the tool and now you want to buy, just say you have two sanders, you want to buy another sander from Festool. Yeah, it's a little bit more money to, to purchase it, but it's a good, good tool. So just go with your gut feeling, go with the good reviews, um, and especially the ones like I do. I test these tools. I show you them. that uh and I test them. Now, the light hasn't been 30 days. It's been, you know, one week. We've been on this job for three and a half days. The, you know, the light worked phenomenal. Bright, and it's not their brightest. They make a bigger one for $300. This was $149. But it was really good. It wasn't, it's not heavy. Like, but these plugs, three, almost say three years, they, they work great. So I can tell you that, you know, honestly. All right, so uh, I hope that answered um, a couple of questions. Um, again, uh, <laughs> never did I think that that um, uh, pipe, vac piping system and grounding um, was do, gonna do so well. Uh, the questions, the, um, and I hope I answered everybody, and I hope everybody was satisfied with, you know, my, my, um, my answer to you. Um, but uh, it is, oh, uh, one other quick thing. I did have a couple of questions about 
the screws that go in as lightning rods and but why wrap the uh, wire around the pipe you get static on the outside of the pipe too um, just use take a shop vac a rigid vac whatever and take their regular hose you know the regular this hose right here the orange hose okay and see what gets clung to the outside of it while you're vacuuming all the static electricity now you got the um, Festool hose. Well, this one's the jacketed one, but the green hose with the black wrap rings on it That's anti-static hose that has the wire running through it. It's grounded at the machine It's grounded at the at the at the end by the tool. So Yes, you do have to wrap the thing in like eight inch increments up it. You have a little tighter if you want to uh, but no let no more than a eight inch you know, and tape, eight inch tape, eight inch tape, it stays there. It's, it'll stay there. And the, and the Gorilla tape will stay there. You do maintenance on it, you add another piece. So that, will, that answers that question. Um, so um, good stuff. Um, you can, you can ground it, you can ground these, but they're not, uh, they do make an anti-static hose. Just buy an anti-static hose if that's what you're gonna use. Um, um, and you can use um, the uh, larger, um, which is this one, and actually here's the hose right here. You can use this hose with that end on the rigid shop vac. I have used it. Uh, before, um, <clears throat> you know, this one was the only vacuum I had, and I, I'm not dragging this out from underneath with the boom arm. I didn't have the other vacs. I used to take my rigid shop vac with the Festool hose, bring it outside, put it on the track saw, and cut up my sheet goods. So it works. It'll work on there. But just keep this for, you know, posterity. So, all right, YouTube. Um, again, thank you very much for all the comments, all the subscribes, all the likes, all the emails. My email will be below. You want a sticker? Send me your info. You want to ask a question? Just email me. Okay, so um, if you like this video, please subscribe. And um, I hope you all have a great week. And I will see you on the next video. Have a good weekend, all. Bye-bye.